a lot of the times we as players learn something out of character that we really shouldn't apply in character because that's called metagaming. But for the sake of roleplay, we will avoid this knowledge like the plague just so we can stick to our character. Now, today, we're going to explore that concept with what is the most damaging thing you've done to your own character in the name of roleplay or avoiding metagaming part three. Again, leave it in the comments below if you have an instance you'd like to share with us. Captain Nat won for a wisdom save after my character stared into the eyes of an old god. This led to her being taken away to Limba at the end of the campaign, away from her husband and newborn son. I had the ability to re-roll multiple times, I just didn't. Let me get you some context. Arcanist Jezebel Faden, later Hard Iron Faden, was a brilliant half-elf wizard. From early on, she was very intelligent and had the knack for the arcane arts. So, a friend of her mother, who she never met, sought out to her and to teach her. After the years, she went to join a group of chronogist wizards to study the arcane manipulation of the fabric of reality of time itself. Things went really bad after an experiment, and she was held in a time stasis for a decade. Her father died, her teacher never came to aid her, only when a tiefling sorcerer touched by the plane of order came and managed to restore her. This was another PC, Akko Hardiron, a clockwork soul sorcerer. After that, they went together to seek something out of life and managed to find an adventuring guild. To shorten the story, the party went on to save a town from the grasps of an evil necromancer, and to it, they had to travel to the town's hero tomb and take a magic item to seal the necromancer once again. In the middle of the way to the tomb that was in the mountains, couple days away from the town, there was a swamp, and in that swamp, the temple of an old god, the forgotten god of the green, the Shishiagami, a jet black deer with a golden aura and eyes that seemed like the vacuum of space. The keeper of the temple was this very old blind goblin who had the strangest ability to see the past and the future, but not the present, and my character was just so dumbfounded that this quirky little old guy had that kind of ability. The ability to see between the veil of the time stream. When she was frozen in time for a decade and her mind fundamentally broken by the experience, that she kind of lost it. So she took upon herself, you know, the old wizard curiosity, their hubris, and stared in the god's eyes. My DM asked for a wisdom save. I rolled a nat one. The consequences would be dire. I had the ability to re-roll. I had the luck feat, the chronogist ability to re-roll, but I decided to keep it. So, at the end of the campaign, two years after the end of the adventure, my DM said, The very next day, after your son is born, the Shishigami comes and just takes you. And that was her end. Left a worried husband, Akko, who she married after the last battle, Pirates of the Caribbean style, now single father, and a poor newborn boy. She would return to one last interaction between the two, and helped save both her loved one lives, to probably my best moment of roleplay. And that's the tale of Arcanist Jezebel Hardiron Faden. I was playing a level 3 tiefling gloom stalker, dual wielding ranger. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? In the fight against the first boss of the campaign, I was hurt pretty badly and mainly focused on avoiding the boss and hide. In comes our bard, who had taken the brunt of the boss's attacks on the first rounds, asking for healing. Since I had the cure wound spell, to behind the pillar I was hiding in. My turn is next and in the initiative order, so my character reached out to touch the bard and heal him with cure wounds at first level. The DM then, with an evil laugh, said, nope. The boss apparently had an ability that allowed him to teleport to a space within five feet of the caster and make an axe attack with advantage as a reaction when a spell that heals HP is cast within 60 feet or something of the boss. On a hit, the spell is interrupted. That sounds kind of OP and cheesy. So the boss does that in a very Omaiwa moi shindeyu nani manner and the DM rolls a nat one. I start celebrating when the DM said, wait, it's with advantage. DM rolls advantage, nat 20. Well, my hand gets cut off and I fall unconscious, bleeding out. Are you really letting me cut off your hand? I think about it for about 10 seconds, 
Yes. And that's how my dual-wielding ranger lost a hand and almost died. The rest of the party managed to finish the boss off and give me a potion that could heal me, although it can cause madness in the long run, but that's a problem for a future character. Now, rest assured, even though we haven't come around to play the next session, the DM has given me a mechanical claw hand as a replacement, and I plan to use the bones of the severed hand to craft a druidic focus, which the DM has allowed and likes very much. Also, that DM seems a little bit OP with that one boss, but we'll let that slide. I played a British lizard folk bard called Toroko for a one-person one-shot for a campaign that, alas, didn't see the light of day. I usually play high wisdom characters, but he was my first with the negative one. He was quite intelligent, but lacked any semblance of common sense. He came across a fey creature that had swirling, obviously hypnotic eyes. Other members of the circus he lived at had reported suddenly falling asleep and having vivid nightmares. I, as the player, put two and two together instantly, but ah, uh, poor Toriko. Do you look into the eyes or away? Oh, of course, I... Wait, Tor Toriko is not a wise lad. I know this is gonna play me bad, but... Yeah, he looks into the eyes with naive curiosity. And he gets hypnotized, has vivid nightmares, and wakes up getting splashes in the face with water. Felt oddly freeing to be so blasé. Mine is this one, ooh. The party was attacked by seven giant spiders. We were level two or three, I don't remember. Three of the six PCs were down. My character had the chance to flee. I knew helping the others was a death sentence, but I ran back and attracted the spider's attention, almost dying in the process. One of the characters was her best friend. She'd lost important people before and refused to lose more. Our DM realized this random encounter was too hard and had a group of wandering monks appear to help us to avoid the TPK. After that, our party became more united, and we developed arachnophobia. Totally worth it. Also, good thinking on the DM's part for actually coming up with a solution that didn't just include a TPK or oh, oopsie divine intervention. Nah, it's just a bunch of monks ready to beat some real hard ass. I played a tiefling. Bard turned mystic turned dark knight. Interesting. I was a mystic at this point. In my first real campaign, my character being into demonic and fiendish powers. Our party visited a mansion to get a quest from one of the county leaders to help find the missing royalty and dealing with a necromancer. We were explicitly told not to go into the basement. And my character being nosy as she is, decided to investigate. She found out after a bit of poking around a demonic sword was stuck in the basement and camped until she had a chance to teleport inside the basement. She got her hands on the sword, possessed by a demon lord, and somehow got away with stealing it. The party then went out on a mission as my character drew power from the sword when we were fighting some orcs. She failed her wisdom save and began going mad, <laughs> being knocked out by a lucky crit without being killed. Good on you. After the party returned, a seal was placed on her to keep her from being taken over. Anyone else just kind of picture an actual physical seal being put on somebody? Not like a barrier spell or anything, but an actual, like, physical seal. <laughs> like that. The group then split up due to IRL issues with people being busy. My character, trying to get rid of the seal and communicate with the demon inside the blade, to no avail for a few sessions as me and our bard went about traveling, doing side quests and finding leads on the necromancer and traumatizing a group of young adventurers by killing a manticore in front of the poor sods, among other things. Wouldn't that be kind of like, awesome, not traumatizing? After a mission out and defeating a few orcs, my character noticed the seal was gone. As we returned to the town, she went to rest in her room as the bard went out to do some shopping. She tried to communicate with the demon and the weapon, no response. She continued trying until she got frustrated and tried forcing the demon to talk by drawing out the power. She failed her saving throw and the perspective shifted to our bard. Hearing screams, stampeding soldiers, things breaking and shattering before seeing my tiefling trapped in a magical cage, growling. Apparently she killed over 100 people and destroyed half a street while possessed and was taken to trial. Somehow, against all odds and being prosecuted against in a country that discriminates against tieflings, she managed to get off without a death penalty, despite constant snide remarks toward the court and the judge. 
the campaign is still going, and she is currently trying to fix that mistake by finding that demonic blade and devouring the powers of the demon inside. Hold up, wouldn't that make the situation worse if you're... Are, no, no, no. This is me metagaming. Don't do that. Do not do that. You did that, and that caused the problem. Don't do it again, because that's going to cause a bigger problem. Best one for me was back in an old AD&D game. I love the older stories. They have such charm. I was playing a young monk, 16 years old if I can remember correctly. First time out of the monastery. In AD&D, monks could find and disable traps like a rogue could. I didn't know that. It also had a version of what would later become Evasion in 3rd edition. Also didn't know that. My party had been traveling down this river and was looking for a place to camp for the night. Through the trees on the bank, we could see what looked like a village. Ah, oh, perfect! We beached the boats and headed to the village to find that it was abandoned and completely covered with huge spider webs. That's a no-no. As we explored the village, we cut away any webs that blocked our path, expecting to find some spiders. Nothing. My character found what must have been the town hall and went inside. There was an ornate chest near the back of the mostly open room. Excited, my not-so-world-wise monk went to open it. The party was screaming at me to stop, both in character and out. As a player, I knew this was an obvious trap. How could it not be? But my monk opened the chest anyway. It was rigged with a delayed blast fireball trap. I rolled well and avoided the damage, but half of the party took the full brunt of it. Oh, ouch. We were like level 2 or 3 at the time. The fire started a chain reaction, burning web after web all through the town and the, into the spider's hiding places. Oh god. Before we could even start to heal up from my character's stupidity, a huge swarm of giant spiders began chasing us. Ugh. Right back to the boats. I think the DM fudged some rolls since there was no way the whole party should have survived, but we made it back to the river in one piece. On the bright side, I did get what was in the chest. Though, it just made things worse, as it was the Eye of Vecna. But that's a story for another time. I need to hear more continuations of this, please, because that was really intense and I got excited. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA here checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to ring that bell, and of course leave a comment down below telling us how you for the sake of avoiding metagaming, or for the name of roleplay, decided to damage your own character or do something that you knew was just a bad idea, but you did it anyway. And, uh, of course, come say hi to me, Brian Von VA, over on Twitch or Twitter or anywhere, preferably Twitch, because that's where I'm streaming and I want to say hi to everybody. And you can find the links to my area in the description below under my website, brianvonva.com. Also, I just wanted to say, I know I sound a bit nasally today because I've been pretty sick, but... It's going to be okay. I promise every one of you it's going to be okay. This time of year, everybody's getting sick. And my advice is very simple. Take a lot of time off if you can. Rest up as much as you possibly can as well. If you have family and friends that are willing to help out during these times, take the help, take the advice, take the love. Because you're not a one-man show. You're not a one-man army, no matter how strong or how awesome you really are. Which I know all of you pretty much are. Take some baths, take some time to rest, sleep, bundle up, get plenty of hydration in, and stay safe, because y'all matter. Love you all, we'll see you next time, bye for now.